with Carmine at Pisa. Carmine. Who lost been, weight? I did. I, ever who, since who I. Who lost weight? I did too. Carmine at Pisa. I know, I know. He's you lost more weight? Who lost weight? Who lost weight? Did yeah, you lose some weight? weight? Yeah. How much? All total from when I was fat. Uh, yeah, I don't remember you. Pounds. 30 pounds? I yeah. lost about 40 pounds. So you, yeah, no, I think, you, you know what it is? We were both fat and didn't realize it. I realized it. I you went, did? I went to a nutritionist and she made, told me how to lose 20 pounds. I did. Uh-huh. And then with all these uh, f ment uh, physical things that happened to me in the last couple of years, yeah. I lost another 10 pounds. Oh, that's... Including yeah, well, I had this thing called C. death that I caught in Venezuela in 217. What the hell is C. Def? It's a bacteria that gets in your intestines and messes up your whole oh. your whole tract down there. Is that what Elton John almost died from when he was down in the Amazon? They had to fly him back from some bacterial infection? Maybe. It was a couple years Maybe. ago. I don't know, but it could be. It was yeah. terrible, terrible. Well, I had it for three months. Let, thanks for letting me know that. I'm going to take South America off my travel list. No, I'll just take Venezuela. Venezuela? Oh, don't, who's going there now? Nobody. Well, we were there right at the tail end of the, uh, the whole thing. It was a great gig with Cactus and... And where we were, it was great. In the main cities, it was all rioting, but we were on like a resort and played. We had, but we did have police escorts everywhere. We got, when we landed at the airport, there were news people waiting for us. And uh, Really? Yeah, yeah, so TV news and all that. And then we got into this van and, and in front of us and back of us, police escorts taking us to the hotel. Yeah. Did you notice what kind of weapons that they had? Big weapons. Did it scare you? No. Yeah. I felt safer, actually. Really? Yeah, because I knew it was crazy. crazy down there. You know, you tell me some crazy stories over the years, and they just keep getting better and better. <laughs> like, everything about you is just, you're not going to believe this one. And then you tell me, and I, yeah. I'd sit there and go, man, that's unbelievable. And then I put them all in, some of them in the book. There's still plenty of them that are not in the book. Oh, yeah, that's right. What's the name of your book again? Stick It, My Life of Sex, Drums, and Rock and Roll. I mentioned in Chapter 5. Okay. You told me that. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Look, I wrote a book too, and I forgot what it was about. Yeah. It just sits in the. I know I never read it after. <laughs> I got upset when I saw my book that I wrote on Amazon for six cents. Really? Yeah, used. I'm like, that's insulting. Six you know, cents. Don't, don't even sell it for six cents. Sell it for six a cents. nickel. Just you know, a nickel. I mean, it costs really? more to, to mail it. Unbelievable, right? Um, what we like to do on this show is what we call rock bio. Your brother did it a couple weeks ago. Who? Rock Bio, your Who? brother, Who? Vinny, oh, Vinny, Vinny Apice. Oh, yeah, my brother, right. You know, and we talked about the difference uh, of the pronunciation of your last name. And then your brother, Fred. Uh, Frank. Frank? Frank yeah. or Fred? Frank. Is it Frank? Frank. There's no Fred there? No Fred. Where does Fred come from? Frederick, right? Frederick. Frank is short for anything? Frank is Italian. Frank? Francis. Oh, okay. Is he the... Oh, see? Francesco. That's where I was getting at. His old... His, his name is Francesco. No, his name is Frank. Frank. Yeah. But not Francis. No. Just plain old Frank. Is Frank the oldest? Yep. Okay, so what does Frank do? Very interested in Frank. We should He's get him on. He's retired now, but yeah. he was an uh, international spice salesman. He sold truckloads of spices to, like, Costco and Target and all that, you know, and he made a fortune. He ended up making more money than me and Vinny. That's amazing, right? It is amazing. It spice. is amazing because he, huh. he was always studying, always studying, going to college and studying. Graduated as a chemist, worked for Pfizer, and then ended up working for a spice company, which is really chemicals anyway. Yeah. yeah. What was the name of the uh, spice company? Baltimore Spice. Oh, that's near McCormick, Baltimore Spice. Is it? Yeah, I guess and so. And then, then that was the original company. Then he, he went in with another guy, and then he started another company. And when he retired, he ended up having a little percentage of it. Oh, that's nice. So, so he's, he's doing very well. Were your parents happier with Frank than you two? Oh, yeah. When of course they were, yeah. yeah. Not as happy as with me and Vinny because Frank didn't do any shows. Wow. You know, they didn't see Frank on TV. You, you know? know, when Vinny was here, well, he was telling me that, I can't believe that this, your parents must have been something else too because they gave him permission to drop out of school so he can play drums with John Lennon. I guess it was a win-win. Yeah. yeah. And there's a song on this A Peace album. All right. It's called so, Brothers and Drums. Brothers and Drums. Which tells the story. And, and, he, and Vinny. he did say that you inspired him to become a drummer, which yeah. is cool. Anytime yeah. you're an older brother and your younger brother wants to take up after you, be like you, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's cool. Is, is there anything better than that? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. And, you know, through the whole, his whole teenage years, he kept watching me, you know, on TV and playing in, you know, Madison Square Garden, playing at big venues. You know, so he 
wanted to do that. He said, that's what I want to do. But Listen, he did it on his own, I got to admit. I, I don't think people realize how big Vanilla Fudge was back in the day. You guys were huge. It was big. I mean, uh, you were on Ed Sullivan three twice, times? Twice. twice. Yeah. But is there something that, that people don't know about you that you've never been asked before when you do these interviews? Well, most people didn't know about this Guitarsius record. Well, yeah, released. we'll get to that. I mean, yeah. No, that's seriously, incredible. that's that's one of the um, the only projects that was never really released here in America with a proper promotion. And now that's what we're doing. I remember hearing this for the very first time, and even the technology made it so that everybody wasn't in the same room when you would do the recordings. I thought there was a track mm -hmm. featuring David Gilmore. Dave Gilmore. No, was, that no? was a. Was that a momentary a lapse of reason when I played? Oh, all right. I'm getting it. See, now what happens when we all get old as disc jockeys and rockers, we get all our stories confused. Carmine played no, drums. you're getting confused. I know the story. <laughs> well, no. Well, yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, okay. Fair enough. But Fair I'm enough. going to do another one, Guitar right. I'm going to ask David to play on it. You should. Now, uh, a lot of people don't realize this. You're the only other drummer in Pink Floyd history where you play drums on Dogs of War which is on the uh, album Momentary Lapse of Reason. I, act, I asked Nick, Nick Mason about that. I, I, how did Carmine end up on the drums? And he said that he faked that he, he heard his hand. What's, yeah. the, what's the truth? They wanted some new blood, some new energy, and that it was, he had something going on with his hands. Uh -huh. you know, his calluses were soft or something. Because he was racing his Ferraris and he wasn't playing drums much. <laughs> Must but be. also on that album is Jim Keltner. I didn't it's know me that. and Jim Keltner on right. that album. I'm actually on one track. He's on the rest of the track. Oh, so he does all the rest and you're on Dogs yeah, of War? I'm on Dogs of War. Mm. Bob Ezrin called me and said, that I'm producing this record. I can, I can screaming for Carmine drum fills. And I said, who's the band? He said, Pink Floyd. And I said, where's Nick? <laughs> he said, well, that, and that's what he told me. He told me his hands were, calluses were soft. And he's been racing his cars and they want some new energy. And this kind of track needs my kind of fills that Nick doesn't do. And then there's something about your style. I, I always, now I really pay attention more so than ever before as I get older and I listen to tracks over and over again and play them on the radio. Now I try to get the nuances of the drumming. Mm -hmm. And you know, my daughter Sophie, she thinks you're the, the greatest. <laughs> I mean, Uncle Carmine this and Uncle That's Carmine great. that. When did you see Carmine? <laughs> you know. um, and she loves do you think I'm sexy? And every time I listen to that track, I go, what the hell is with the dime so I can call my mother? Who's dime? Who's calling the mother and why? Well, that was Rod's lyrics. You know? Oh, okay. Blame it on Rod. Remember uh, Blue Murder? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Jelly Roll. That was a great uh, yeah, album. Great song, yeah. And I, I remember you telling me we were in the back of a, a taxi long ago, over on 26th Street. I remember mm -hmm. the 26th Street. I go, Hey, do you have that on vinyl? You couldn't find any of the Blue Murder on vinyl. So are is there any plans to maybe you know remaster the Blue Murder period? Or, I don't know. That's you know? it's John's deal. It's he he owns it, John oh, Sykes. I, so I okay. don't really get involved in it. All right. You well, know, I've been I tried to get Blue Murder reunion for years and years and I stopped. I kind of said forget it. And finally uh He's going out with a, he wanted to go out and do a John Sykes and Blue Murder tour. And I said, I don't want to do that, you know. So he's yeah. going to go out as John Sykes with Tony Franklin and another drummer and play some, excuse me, some of his new albums, some, a couple of Blue Murder, Thin Lizzy, White Snake, mm. and all his history. All right. I said, that's your thing, you know. When you're ready to do Blue Murder, call me and we'll go out and do Blue Murder. All right, well, let's uh, go back. And this is a story that started in Denver on a station called KLZ. Okay. You guys are involved with it, Vanilla Fudge. This is the first time Led Zeppelin will play in the United States, and they right. sent Led Zeppelin 1, the first album, mm -hmm. to KLZ in Denver, a station I worked at at one point. Oh, you were there? Oh, and it that. made, it was just life-changing yeah. for so many people. I, I could tell you what I know about the story, but I would like you to tell us, take us through how Led Zeppelin ends up joining Vanilla Fudge, which is a big band back in the day, and you guys, you agreed to pay them. When the uh, agent, Ron Terry, promote, uh, asked promoter Barry Fay, I want to put Led Zeppelin on there, Jimmy Page's new band, 1500 bucks. Come on, 1500 bucks for, for Led Zeppelin. He said, we don't need them, we're sold out. He said, come on, put them on, you know, we just want to give Jimmy a, you know, a little uh, shot here. No, we don't need him. He says, I'll tell you what, 
you pay seven fifty and Vanilla Fudge you pay seven fifty. So he agreed to that. So from that they got on to the first show. What happened after that? Well, after that we did a lot more shows with them. Mm -hmm. Right after that, and we went to Seattle, Portland, like uh, that area. We did a bunch of shows with them, and then. Uh, Six months later, I had gotten John Bonham a drum set like mine, so he loved it. And I called Ludwig and said, I think they're going to be big. <laughs> Understatement of five decades. Yeah. And uh, we had the same drum set, and then we went out for the summer. And we did, I don't know how many shows, 20, 30 shows together. Now it was like alternating headline because they got so big so fast. Well, you know, it also makes a lot of sense. I'll get to, to why it makes a lot of sense in a little bit, but that drum set that you got them, that's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame right now, isn't it? Well, they took away one bass drum after that tour. He had two bass drums on that tour. And uh, Robert and Jimmy thought he was too busy. Having to two bass away, drums? Yeah, take away the one bass drum, because he did great with one bass drum. Huh. Um, but after he saw my kid, he wanted one like mine. Right. So. When they took away that one bass drum, it became the Led Zeppelin drum set that became famous. Let's talk about your guitar, Zeus, because I think this is great. And this is go back. This goes back a, a while ago, as you said. And I remember hearing it for the first time I, 14 years ago. Yeah. Let's just say 14 years ago. I'm like, damn, this is really cool. And we actually played some of the tracks on the Scott Meany show, if you remember, because right. you'd fill yep. in for yep. Scott. Yep. Then um, maybe it was last year, a year or two ago. I was going through my catalog, my digital catalog. I was transferring mm -hmm. stuff over. And and then I, I put together a stream, a radio station of my own that's online at ZachMartinRocks.com, right? Mm -hmm. I got two. And I'm driving to work one day and I, I look down, I'm like, what's this? It's great. And this guitar is this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot all about that. Yeah. Immediately I get to the studio. I picked up the phone and called you. I go, dude, this guitar is this. is awesome. Yep. And at the same time you're going, well, guess what? We're yeah. releasing it. We're releasing it. Yeah. So let's talk and about... Got, and I got some bonus tracks on there that were never released, like that first track, Mother Space. Was yeah. never finished. Okay, but this is great. It's a 2D... Well, wait a minute. One I, CD. I, I remember it was like more than one CD. Yeah, back. yeah. This, oh, all right. There's 33 tracks that are on digital platforms. Oh, see, so I, I think okay. somewhere in my collection, which I couldn't get to play for whatever the reason. you think it would always be able to play it. Uh -huh. I have all... 33, maybe more. No, you more. don't have 33. You, you, you sure? Have maybe 28, 27. Okay, all right. Because there's, there's five brand new bonus tracks. Okay, all on right. On that, which is, some of these are, like the Mother Space is a brand new track that was never released. I found the 24 track. I dumped it to digital, and I listened oh. to it, and everything was there except the guitar player. Yeah. So, so and I asked Bumblefoot if he'd play on it, and he said he would, he did. So that's a brand new track. Uh, another one, John Norm's track, Nothing, was uh, never released. It was finished, but it was never released. It was released only once in Japan, I believe, and um, but never released anywhere else in the world. And it was only on CD. Well, let's talk about some of the other guitar guests you have on this, on yep. Guitar Zeus. Mm -hmm. This is a great album. If you love guitar rock, this is for you. Gonna Rain, featuring Richie Sambora. Four Miles High with Steve Morse. Nobody knew Brian May. Now, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe, I, this 14 years ago, my first thing was like, how did you get Brian May? So how did that happen? How did you get Brian May well, to <clears throat> track? Well, when I came up with the idea, uh, it took me a couple of years to find a manager that could put the deal together. So while I was out doing things, I ran into Brian at a uh, clinic that we were both doing at a music store, at a music store day. And I asked him if he'd play on it. He said, yeah. Because we were friends from the Rod days, and hang, when they had to hang out in L.A. for taxes, I used to hang out with them quite a bit. Yeah, tax refugees, isn't that yeah, what they're called? Yeah, so, so I knew Brian, and so when the time came, he said, yeah, send me the tape. I gave him a choice of songs, he picked that song, and I sent him a 24-track Slave by FedEx. He did it and sent it back. That's nice. And now, um, mm -hmm. the thing about Brian May, he's definitely got a signature sound. You just know it's him when he plays. Sort of like when you play the drums. I know yep. it's a car yep. minor piece. Yep. Uh, Brian May, he's got his, uh, you know, own style. Did you see the biopic, Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes. What did you think of it? I thought it was good for a movie, but, you know, just like I just saw The Dirt also from... Uh, uh, I didn't watch that. You know? I, don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm in the book. 
you know, I was on the on their first tour. They opened up for Ozzy when I was with Ozzy. Oh, I see. You know, so I mean, the details are wrong. Yeah. You know, well, time yeah, is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the pan, even the car that that uh, they had in the movie with Vince Neil that killed that guy Razzle. It wasn't a Ferrari, it was a Pantera, just like mine. Ford Pantera. Yeah, because I had the Ford Red Pantera. He yeah. loved it, and he went out and bought the same thing. A 72 Ford Pantera? That's right. And then, that's right. And that's what, that's what he did. So in the movie, it was a Ferrari, but it oh. wasn't a Ferrari no. in real life. Just stuff like that. Yeah, but and I've been in touch with Mick lately. Mick well. Mars? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Mick did an interview for uh, oh. talking, talking Metal for me. I, I don't... This is kind of funny, but cruel at the same time. I'm happy that Vince Neil's now fatter than me. Number one. Oh, he's not what? He's fatter than me. He is? Yes. Now? Yes. He is? Why are you looking surprised? Like somebody else can't be fatter than me? No, no. Once in my life, I, I got someone else. I didn't know he was fat. Yeah. Oh, man. He's chubby wubby. Okay. Oh, my gosh. And I don't want to say anything negative, but... I saw a video on Facebook where he's singing, yeah. and it sounds like Cartman from South Park, and yeah. he's got the female singers helping him out, which yeah. is cool, but, yeah. yeah, it's, well, yeah you know, Nick was never, like, a, a great, great Vince. singer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Vince, he wasn't a great, great singer. He he's a screamer. Singer. He was a good performer. Yeah. You know? All right, well, I'll, I mean, when I'll they give were, him that. When they were opening up for Ozzy, they were, they were killing it. You know, the whole band was killing it. They were really good. Yeah. Well, they were good. I mean, they, they put on a good show. I, I'm became, just... I became good friends with them in, in those days, and... Oh, all right. I, still, well, I still talk to Mick. Mick's on on this record, you know, Mick Moss. He just did a, an interview with uh, Talking Metal for me, oh. with him and Pat Travis. You got uh, Neil Sean on this. You got um, Slash. Yeah. You good friends with Slash? I, I was good friends. I, have, I haven't been in touch with yeah. him lately. But you got to understand one thing. What? When we did this record in 1995, yeah, I know. Everybody Grunge was yes. Was right. has been. Yes, I know that. Yes. Slash wasn't with Guns N' Roses. Brian wasn't with Queen. Neil wasn't with Journey. Dweezil Zappa, who's on the. I, the I other love Dweezil. Dweezil was just Frank's son. Now, now everybody's yeah. big again. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. It's, That's why it's we're cool. releasing this now. Yeah. I'm just going to release it as a catalog deal, and then my guy I'm working with from uh, Primary Wave said, "You need to keep the digital rights because." Soon, iTunes is going to be out of the downloading business. They're going to be just streaming with Apple Music. Um, and, you know, anybody that owns the digital rights is going to be making the majority of the money as a label, as well as whatever the artist makes. He said, so if you're going to do a catalog deal, don't give them digital rights. So I did that with that, and I did that with uh, oh, King well, Cobra Live oh, wow, Sweden. Oh, wow. Sweden. You know, right. Sophie's learning Swedish. Oh, that's Just nice. letting you know. Yeah, so, so I, I, I put both of those on the, all the digital platforms on my own label, and oh, Guitar Zeus wow. is being released on my own label, Rocker Records, so for CDs and vinyl. I like this. Where uh, that's a great vinyl. You're, you're, yeah, yeah that's half a, and half. Yeah, great. Yeah. And you're stitched together like you're some sort of that's Frankenstein. A, yeah, that's sinister. If it's and uh, is is the name. Apathy or a peace sentence. Well, I used to say when we were promoting that, I go, it's just like A P P I C E. It's only three letters longer than E O P. Okay, see? He made it funny. Yeah. Oh. All right, this is good stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for you. I hope that, I hope Guitar Zeus becomes a super digital hit for you worldwide. Well, that's and it we, should. It that's, should. That's, it should. I it mean, should that's do what very we're well. Working on because uh, it was never, I just wanted it to come out and do PR and get people to know about it because it's been out, but nobody really knows about well, it. Well, yeah, I knew about it, but yeah, I, know, I, I mean, what, what good does it mean knowing? About it, yeah. Yeah. But, right. but now I'm doing a lot of interviews and it's been- That's great. It's I mean, a lot of, uh, and, and the greatest thing about it is people are recognizing that this is not a compilation of like a tribute to anybody. This is the, the biggest collection of guitar players on one record that's not a tribute to anybody. Yeah, you know what? I, ever done. I originally, if you remember, I did the voiceover for this commercial that was on television. Right, you remember? Yeah. yeah, Guitar Zeus, available at record stores yes, everywhere. Yes, yes. I, when I would listen to groups like, whether it's Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Vanilla Fudge, or Cactus, or any of the heavy metal things, it's like, heavy metal or nothing, man! Hard rock or nothing, man! And then to find out that drummers like Bill Ward from Black Sabbath or various other ones all grew up listening to Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich and these other drummers that my dad told me about. <clears throat> yep. 
Um, what were the drummers that you uh, listened to? Jim Cooper, Buddy Rich, Rich. Matt Roach, Joe Morello. Joe Did you know that Sammy Davis Jr. could play the drums? Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I look at Did some of those. Did you know Fred Astaire could play the drums? I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's in my book. I gave him one of my drum books. You gave him one of your drum yeah, books? Yeah. Dude. So. There's, there's, there's one of the stories in my book. Uh, we played with Rod six nights at the Forum. Fred Astaire came with Gregory Peck to see us. Oh man, Gregory Peck! Right? That's and great! Then, and then we went to Rod's wedding uh, party by Alan Carr gave. And uh, this big guy walks up to me, it was Gregory Peck. He comes over and goes, Hi, I'm, I'm Gregory, I'm Gregory I'm, Peck. Yeah, I know who you are. That's great. My mother would be freaked out if she yeah, see, knew I was what I'm here, talking right? about. So, yeah. And he's, wow. he's saying that he, I, I, I was with Fred Astaire watching you, you guys and when you did your solo. Fred Astaire turned to me and said, this is the best drum solo I've seen since Gene Krupa. Wow. And I said, wow, Fred Astaire said that about me? And I'm thinking, Gregory Peck is telling you this, you know, and I'm like all freaked out. He said, you know, Fred's a drummer. I said, no, I didn't know that. He said, and he always said to me, man, I'd love to learn how to play rock drums, you know? So I said, well, I have a book, you know, instructional books. So he says, oh man, you can give it to me and I'll give it to Fred. I said, okay, Greg. <laughs> Gregory so Peck, I did. What's so your, I did. He what, lived right next door to Rod Stewart. And he said, next time you're at Rod's house rehearsing, come over and give me a book and I'll give it to Fred. It's so cool. And, and then I got a letter from Fred. He gave me a letter back saying, thank you for the, the book with the nice inscription. I've enjoyed your music, your work many times. Love, Fred Astaire. That's so, amazing. Whoa. You can buy it on my website. You can buy okay. it on, on my website, comradepeace.com. And you for the video. It, and you buy it on Merch Now. Do I, do I look thin, video guy? Do I look thin? You, maybe you go up like they do with all the fat newscasters. They go up higher so they look thinner. No, that's what I do. I take it from the top. That's right. That's a, the old trick. And then you do the duck pout, that yeah, duck yeah. thing. You I know. don't have to do that no more. So oh. my, all my skin is dropping. I have the natural... You look good for now. you look good for a 95-year-old. You really do. I do. Get uh, <laughs> Guitar Zeus now on Amazon. It's a fantastic collection of songs. That will blow your mind, man, especially if you're and in if guitar they're on rock. Spotify and all that, they can get 33 tracks. We're going to make sure that we play it on our stream. Yeah. We'll play it, you yeah. know. Uh, and also, this is great. The Apice Brothers, Apice Brothers. Mm -hmm. And your your brother Frank says it completely different than Apiche. the two. Apiche. Mm -hmm. So, Frank, it's the Apiche album, uh -huh. uh, Carmine Brothers, yeah. uh, Carmine and Vinny. And then you got. Sweet and Rock Live. Sweetest Rock and Roll. Good stuff. Oh, and Cactus. And Cactus. Cactology. Yeah. This cactus is good stuff. And then Patrick Van Buric. No, I don't know who that is. <laughs> uh, the guy right. behind the camera. Look, oh, he you. made this. Oh, I didn't know that. He's got a track called Open Your Eyes, oh. and it's uh, about living on the spectrum. Oh. Yeah, so, you know. Okay. We've got musicians. we got... None of us are taking... The only drugs we take around this place is for blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny thing. All my old, all my old friends that you know I meet on the road and everything, we used to talk about you know what chicks were with, what drugs we were taking. Now it's like, are you on a cholesterol pill? Oh no, yeah, even yeah, yeah, on, uh, yeah, you're on a blood pressure pill. All right. Well, listen, when we get to the old folks' home in Englewood, I get the call at four o'clock. Bingo. There you go. Broadcasting from the Rock and Roll Bomb Shelter. I'm ready. I wanna rock! Surrounded by radioactive biscuits and the world famous Rock Eyes. Located 40 feet beneath the radio station. It's the Big Fat American Rock Show. With your host, the Doc of Rock, the Professor, everyone's favorite mad music magician, crazy uncle, and your best friend in the whole wide world, Zach Martin.